Hey, my YouTube friends, welcome back. In this channel, we're constantly tracking the open up progress China has made to foreign nationals and to its own citizens. Um, if you haven't checked out the series before, I've linked to the previous videos in the description and uh, you're welcome to check that, that out. So in this video, I'm going to update the latest news, the latest progress uh, China has made to like open its border to foreign nationals, to foreigners, to either work or for whatever reason needs to be in China. Um, how are they going to obtain the eligible visas and how are they able to travel to China and all the quarantine policies and what, what it is looking like when they're landing China, um, being in or finishing the quarantines and what is the like the uh, normal citizen's life look like in terms of uh, handling the COVID situation. Okay, so now in this video, we have three uh, big news the, compared with the previous months. The first one being the visa application process change for those who wants to apply a, a Z work visa or other types of visa. Uh, so a good news is that the PU letter is no longer required for many countries. That's great. So according to this this article, this news post that China briefing sent out uh, on July the 27th, 2022, the Chinese embassy in Germany announced that that applicants in Germany who intend to return to China to work no longer required such a PU letter. Um, that includes they can uh, apply a business M visa or a uh, academic exchange F visa uh, without submitting the previous required invitation letter. And also similar similar news as of July the 4th, 2022, travelers from Netherlands who intend to go to China to resume work and production no longer need no longer need a PU letter when they apply for a business M visa and visitor F visa. And also as of July the 1st of 2022, a PO letter was no longer required to apply for Chinese work Z visa, business M visa, and visitor F visa as part uh, as per the announcement of the Chinese embassy in Italy, France, the UK, and Singapore. And the country, the list of the countries that exempt from the PO letter is increasing. Uh, earlier last month, earlier June and July, there are like several other countries, including including the United States, uh, India, Indonesia, South Korea, and many other countries. I'll attach the link to this post in the description of this video so you can check out if your country is part of the list that is um, exempt from this PO letter requirements. So that, that is a sign of like foreign nationals travel to China. They're like relaxing the restrictions into partially till it can be fully resumed the international travels and international communication working studying uh, stuff like this so that's definitely a welcome the change to those who needs to or wants to travel to china either for business purpose or for study purpose or for any reasons family reunion something like that um yeah that's the first topic i want to talk about and the second one is the quarantine policy in china is somewhat relaxing. So for those people who traveled from abroad into China, we all know there's very strict quarantine policies to be like uh, people who, who landed in China needs to go to those quarantine hotels to either quarantine for a 14 days or a 10 days as we previously updated for those eight of eight experimental cities in China. And now according to the latest uh, rules that this quarantine time is relaxing to seven days plus seven days of centralized quarantine plus three days of at home uh, quarantine. That is uh, also a welcome change. So according to the official China's uh, coronavirus prevention plan, the version nine, uh, the quarantine time has been optimized from 14 days plus seven days at home uh, observation to seven days plus three days at home observation. That's a significant uh, decrease of the quarantine of the forced quarantine time. Um, although China remains one of the few countries, major countries that still has very strict quarantine policies. I think many of many countries in the world are now like relaxing all its quarantine force force the quarantine policies that travelers from other countries no longer required to quarantine or stay at home. For some of the countries, they don't even require a negative COVID test results or a fully vaccination proof to enter the country. But it is what it is. China is still like acquiring people to have the negative policy, negative test result, as well as a uh, seven day quarantine in central locations like the hotels. 
that's the sec that's the second news. And the third news that is that there's more and more news talking about China is in increasing the international flights from different different cities in the world to to China cities. Uh, naming this one Air China to increase Beijing to New York route in June amid more international routes expected for Chinese carriers. And from this article, uh, it's not only mentioning New York to, to Beijing and also a few other countries like Vietnam, Thailand <clears throat> and some uh, other European countries. They have increased the flights from their prospective countries to, to China's cities. And that's also some good news for international travelers, as we talked about. And also the the procedures to onboard this airplane is also relaxing. Uh, now it only needs the negative uh, test results, no antigen report, no other tests, no more hustles. But at the end of this video, despite of all those good news, the the three aspects we talked about that. That, that, that are good for the international travelers who intended to travel to China either for working purpose or for other purpose. The regular COVID testing in China is still there. I mean, in many cities, especially for those big cities, the citizens in like Beijing and Shanghai, they need to regularly have COVID tested to have their QR code, the green QR code afloat be there in order to enter almost any public uh, locations, public places like restaurants, like shopping malls, public transportation, stuff like that. Either these citizens need to be tested every 48 hours or 74, 72 hours or every week. That's still something need to be considered because you, if you're staying in those cities, you need to be constantly uh, tested for negative COVID results in order to have this green QR code to be, be moving freely in the cities. Um, uh, I don't have the exhaustive list of the policies in each city, like, but you need to check that out um, before planning your trip and to like stay in that city. It's just something to be mindful of um, before making this decision. I know a lot of positive progress has been made over the past few months, especially from the last time we made the video, the China opened up video and traveled to China series. I know a lot of conditions have been improved with the the global trend of opening up. China has to like adapt to some of them, but I think China is still one of the, if not the most strict zero COVID policy country. Um, uh, but let's be realistic. I don't think the policy will have some like dramatic change in a very short time. It'll gradually change, I think throughout this year and carry out to sometime next year, especially after the October the China's uh, Communist Party's Congress meeting, the, the big meeting of every five years. I, I don't see massive policy shift before that meeting, but after October and November, we'd, expect, we'd either expect more uh, open up news, more relaxing news, and maybe some like new directions, but that's all after that. So still very good progress in terms of uh, visa application progress. Uh, in terms of quarantine policies when arriving to China, landing in China, and also uh, international flights increase, that's also welcomed. Uh, but again, might be mindful about the regular COVID test uh, in China's big cities uh, when you plan to travel to China. All right, that's everything I want to update for this month for this series. Uh, please subscribe to this channel and follow if you want to follow up the China Open Up news and if you have the plan to travel back to China. I'll see you next time.